So now we come to this important part about how do you evaluate word representations, right? Uh, so there are different tasks that are set up. I hope some of you have read that paper and uh, I can see that none of you have read that paper. Uh, so semantic relatedness is one way of evaluating word representations. So ask humans to judge the relatedness between a pair of words. So I construct some pairs of words and I show them to a human and ask them how related do you think they are on a scale of one, 0 to 1. So it's likely for cat and dog, someone would say 0.8, or at least you would expect values greater than 0.6, right? Now, you have learned the representations using your model. It could be any of the models that we have seen so far, continuous bag of words, skip gram, or glove vectors. So these are the three things, right? Continuous bag of words, skip gram, which is known as word to vec, and the glove representations. And within them, you could have this hierarchical softmax and other things and so on. So you could, if I ask you what's the similarity between cat and dog according to your word representations, you could just use the cosine similarity and tell me that this is the representation, right? So now I'll have mini search words, W1, W2, for which I have the human judgment and I have the model judgment, right? So I'll have uh, W11, W21, then W21, no, sorry, sorry, 1, 2, and so on. I'll have many such word pairs. For each of these word pairs, I would have the human judgments and I would have the model judgments, right? How close do the humans think they are and how close do the model think they are? Now I can compute the correlation between these two uh, decisions or these two random variables and I would want that for a good model this correlation should be high. So whenever humans said that the two words are uh, actually similar, the models word vectors should also predict a high cosine similarity and whenever humans said that the two words are not similar, the models word vectors should also result in a low cosine similarity. How many of you get this? So that's one way of evaluating how good your word representations are, right? So as I was saying earlier, how do you tune those parameters? So you could have such a set. Once you have learned some word representations and you want to see whether parameter K1 was better than, or sorry, rather hyperparameter K1 was better than hyperparameter K2, you could just take those two word representations learned by these two different hyperparameter settings, evaluate them on this corpus, and whichever gives a higher correlation, you can keep that hyperparameter. How many of you get that? Other task is synonymy detection. So from a resource known as WordNet or from other dictionaries, you could get all the synonyms of a word, okay? So then people create a corpus where you give a, syn a word and give four candidates or some K candidates out of which one of these is the correct synonym, the others are just distraction words, right? Distracting words. Now what would you expect your word representations to do? You have word representations for all of these. What would you want? How would you pick up the synonym based on word representations? The one which has the highest cosine similarity. So again, you will compute the cosine similarity, you will rank these, and you will pick up the synonym, right? And now again, I gave you 100 such instances. I gave you a word, four candidates, and I gave you 100 such different word comma candidate pairs. And you pick the synonym for every one, and say for 60 of them you got it right, then your accuracy is 60%. So that tells you how good your word representations are. Again, if you are given two different hyperparameter settings, one gives you 60% accurate, the other gives you 70% accurate, you will probably go with the one which gives you 70% accurate. Is that fine? How you can use this? Okay. The third is analogy task, where you find the nearest neighbor of this operation. What should it be? Grand order. This is this analogy task, right? brother is to sister as grandson is to something, right? So now the idea here is that if I mean, it's like pretty weird, right? So if I take brother minus sister, I get something. Now, if I add grandson to that, then I should get granddaughter. It's intuitive in a way, right? I mean, this is what you would expect your word vectors to do, right? So that's how the analogy task works. So you could set up an analogy task. You could have, and you could get several such analogy tasks from online tests and so on. And you would want your word representations to exhibit this kind of a behavior, right? So again, you have these 100 analogy tasks. For each of these, you know the true answer. And from each of these, you predict the answer from your word representations. And for C, for how many of them you get it correct. Uh, then you could also have a syntactic analogy. So you can tell me what this would be, right? In fact, here again, it should be the other way around. V works minus V work plus V speak would be V speaks, right? So that's the syntactic thing, right? So you are getting a, a different form of the word. 
So, your word representations should also have this kind of uh, properties that is what you desire. So, just evaluating whether your word representations show this kind of a property or not. So, we have seen three tasks one is semantic relatedness whether a pair of words how do humans rank it and how do the model how does the model rank it then the synonymy detection and the analogy task. In each of these you do something with the word representations in the first two you use the dot product in the last one you use some uh, uh, arithmetic operation over the word representations. So, you would want v brother minus v sister is equal to v grandson minus v granddaughter right. So, v granddaughter right. So, that is there is a plus minus error there yeah. uh, ok. So, now which algorithm gives the best result right. So, whenever we see a bunch of algorithms same as we did with Adam and Adagrad and so on we always want to answer this question which of these gives the best result ok. So, there was this study done by Boroni et al in 2014 that showed that the predict based models right which are either which are the predict based models actually skip gram continuous bag of words and even glove for that matter right because it is also a predict based model. These continuously or consistently outperform count based models ok that is what they said. But a year later there was a separate study done by someone and in my opinion this was a more thorough analysis because uh, the earlier study right they did not really give SVD a chance to win in my opinion this is all on camera. But the later the second set of guys right they gave SVD a chance to win. So, I will tell you one example of how they gave SVD a chance to win. So, remember in word to vec you had this weird 3 by 4 which you are using to raise the probability right. Now, what they did is they said even in a co occurrence matrix actually these counts that you have if here you are raising them by 3 by 4 in the case of word to vec and getting better results why not do the same thing in the co occurrence matrix also at the end of the day you are raising the count to 3 by 4 right. So, whatever counts you have here based on that you will compute PPMI or PMI or whatever, but first why not try to adjust these counts. So, why not have a parameter k such that you can raise the counts to this parameter and then do all those computations and that is fair because the word to vec has a parameter hyper parameter. So, why not give a similar hyper parameter to SVD. Similarly, they did something to take care of the k negative samples which word to vec has why not give SVD also a similar chance right. So, when they did these kind of adjustments they found that after these modifications SVD does as well as or even better than word to vec models for the similarity tasks, but not for the analogy task that the analogy task was the last task right brother is to sister is grandson is to granddaughter right. So, in most cases we care about similarity and in very few cases we care about analogy if you are doing NLP application. So, that means in most cases SVD would just be fine right. So, that is what I said at the beginning. 